Many years ago, I saw someone throwing out an iMac G3 just down the road from where I live. And since then I've packed it away in our shed and have never tested it. What better time than now to pull it out and see if it still works. Released in late 1999, the 350MHz Blueberry model lacked features such as Firewire and DVD, but came in at a low $999 US dollars. And for the time, the inclusion of Ethernet wasn't all that common on a lot of desktops. And compared to the higher-end models, it also lacked a VGA port that would normally be found here on the back. The third-generation slot-loading IMAX had internals that were far more visible thanks to the removal of the metal CRT housing. This allowed for passive convection cooling done without any fans, with hot air coming out around the convenient carrying handle. This ultimately destroyed many of these machines due to overheating, but at least it runs in virtual silence. This particular Mac seems to have survived mostly unscathed aside from some minor scrapes that will, with any luck, be removable. And to help with airflow, I feel as if lifting the keyboard style foot is a good idea. Even though this was the budget option, it had a number of improvements over the 333 MHz fruit models it replaced. A faster processor, 333 up to 350 MHz, faster RAM and more of it as standard, a faster hard disk interface, improved graphics, a better sound system and support for an optional airport wireless internet card. And as far as I know, the 350 MHz Blueberry model was also 200 US dollars cheaper upon release. I'm sure many iMac buyers regret not waiting a few months for the release of the slot loading versions. So let's see if this old machine still works. It's a reassuring sound hearing the boot chime, and a short time later it loaded into Mac OS 9.1. The display looks great in real life. It's a bit hard to match up the refresh rate, so there's a bit of rolling shutter visible in my footage. It's seemingly a functional machine, but how about we open it up and see what makes it tick. Even as far back as 1999, Apple were making you pay more for the privilege of having a different coloured iMac, and these blueberry ones are very common as a result. It turns out that a lot of people were happy just to purchase the base model, and if you didn't have a need for Firewire or a DVD drive, then it was worth saving $200. And since the hardware of these Macs are basically strapped to a fairly conventional CRT display, some metal shielding is required. That's what this cover is for. Aside from looking really cool, it protects the circuitry from magnetic interference. It took a fair bit of wiggling to finally remove it. Apart from the RAM and airport Wi-Fi card, there are no other expansion possibilities. You've got one optical drive and one mechanical hard disk, which is to be expected so that it can all be crammed into such a tight casing. And relievingly, the capacitors don't appear to be bulging or leaking, a sign that this machine probably never ran all that hot during its lifetime. Another great thing to see is that the lithium timekeeping battery has also not leaked everywhere, a notorious problem with older Apple computers. But while it hasn't yet leaked, it is definitely flat and holding no charge as we can see here. And thankfully you can get new half AA 3.6 volt batteries dirt cheap online. Next to come out are the drives, which are held in place by a very sturdy caddy. This is the original 24x CD-ROM drive, and as I said before, the DVD drive was only standard on the higher-end fruit models. Turns out there is also the Mac OS 9 install disk for the iMac sitting in the drive. The hard disk was also smaller on the base model at only 6.8 gigabytes, and sadly, the warranty expired over 19 years ago. One good part about these logic boards is that they can easily be swapped between iMacs with the same model number. This one of course featuring the 350MHz PowerPC 750G3 processor. Delving in further can be a fiddly ordeal, even more tricky with some of the plastic becoming very brittle due to age. You've got to keep in mind that these machines are around 23 years old. I tried to be very gentle as to not break any more of the plastic clips unnecessarily. It really looks weird without the translucent plastic on the front, doesn't it? Now it's time to give it a bit of a clean. With the front bezel off, I can clean much more of the CRT's display surface. It's good to see that the glass is entirely scratch free. I really wanted to take it apart further, but this plastic is so brittle and has already started to crack in a few places. So I'll simply clean up what I can from here. It's a shame that the white plastic has begun to show its age. Most of the internals aren't all that dusty as once again, this is cooled passively without the use of a fan. But being 23 years old, most of the debris had fallen to the bottom of the casing. It's definitely going to look a bit clearer, given how much has come off. Now the reassembly can begin. 
It's nice to open up these old machines. It really reminds me when I used to be obsessed with these computers. Without the use of a tutorial, there was a lot of trial and error involved. Emphasis on the error. These machines are not that usable anymore, but at least they look pretty cool. And this one will definitely be a bit cleaner with the use of some eucalyptus oil. It works pretty well to get rid of the scuff marks and gunk on the casing. I wish more computers were this fun, and it's good to see that Apple's latest iMacs are once again colourful as well. So why don't we try playing around with this Mac and see what it can do. It's currently got 128 megabytes of RAM, double what it originally came with. How times have changed. Something that hasn't changed is the need for a nice keyboard, and thanks to Keytron for sending this over. Links in the description if you want to purchase one. There looks to be quite a few programs on here, the usual Microsoft Office and Adobe Creative software. And a game that is surprisingly common on old Macs I come across is Bugdom. A game where you play as a bug. It's pretty graphically impressive for a late 90s game. An ancient version of Photoshop also runs great on here, if only I had some artistic ability. And some of the other games don't seem to work, at least I don't think this is how it's supposed to work. Either way, this is a cool old Mac from the tail end of the 90s. I remember a time when these were being thrown out everywhere, but now they have some collectability. Thank you very much for watching. It's honestly been a lot of fun using this old iMac G3, and I'm also glad to have it in my collection. I've got a lot more old tech related videos coming up in the near future, so please subscribe if you want to see more, and if you've liked this video, feel free to leave a like. You take it easy, and I'll see you in the next video.